Hello and welcome to the Annuity Straight Talk podcast, episode number 141. My name is Brian Anderson, founder and creator of AnnuitystraightTalk.com. If you want to make an appointment with me to talk about your financial situation and see if annuities fit, if somebody's spinning you a load of bullshit, you can get a hold of me. I'll tell you if you're right or not. If you have a hunch that they're not telling you the whole truth and it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Top right corner of any page on AnnuitystraightTalk.com. Schedule a call. Enter your time zone. Pick a time. Name, email, phone number. I will give you a call. That's how it works. Last week, I talked about Roth conversions. So episode 141, financial conspiracy theories. I was thinking about some other things about this. Wait a second, because I want you guys to think about things the right way. Understand what your risks are in retirement. Don't believe everything you're told. And very few things in life are guaranteed. So last week, I asked for a lot of questions. And... I only got one question, but I got got it about a dozen times. I'm going to share the newsletter, but first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to last week's newsletter. If you're looking at the screen, I had an incredible comment. Now, understand that I've recorded that episode twice because the audio didn't track on the first one. In the first recording, I covered Irma. I talked about it. And in the second recording, because then I get a little flush, it's like, oh, crap, let's just get this done. And then I forgot I rolled over it. Now, it, it didn't get as much coverage as it deserved, but a client, guy I've done business with, we go way back, eight, nine years, astutely pointed out first and made a comment on the website. He sums it up. Income-related monthly adjusted amounts. And so this, like, kicks into a whole lot of different ideas about what's really the kind of headwinds you're going to face when you go into retirement. He did a really good job explaining it. It's on the website, last week's newsletter, Roth conversions. You can go look at it. He's going to tell you, I didn't feel like I needed to write it again. So back to this newsletter, financial conspiracy theories, Irma, social security and Roth IRAs. Here's what it is. So the Irma is, it hits you when you make too much money. I didn't hear about it a whole lot until just a few years ago. Then a lot of people are coming. It's like, well, I got hit with Irma. Income-related monthly adjusted amount. What happens is if you make over a certain amount of money, then you've got to pay extra for Medicare. So it's not free for everyone. Some people have to pay for it. It's called, I call it a means test. If you make enough money, then you got to pay for Medicare. It was supposed to be free, but it's not. So when somebody's retiring and making over that amount, so right now it is, So Paul's comments in the article were probably a couple of years ago, but right now it's $103,000 for an individual and $206,000 for a couple adjusted gross income. So then you look at that and say, well, you got to pay more for Medicare. Yeah. Boo hoo. I'm so sorry. You made so much money. You've been so successful. You got to pay for this, but it was promised regardless. It was promised as being a tax-free benefit rule. Things change over time. So, I know a lot of people that are drawing, making more just normal income in retirement who are trying to avoid that. And of course, avoid it if you can. If you make over a certain amount, then you just got to pay for it. The problem is that a lot of people, when they go to last week, and this is why Paul brought it up, and he's absolutely right, doing a Roth conversion adds a a substantial amount to your income Doing a Roth conversion in in addition to just paying the taxes, then you get stuck in an Irma situation. So it's not realized income, it's reportable income, and nobody likes that. So a lot of people, one guy commented, yeah, we knew it was going to happen. We calculated the cost, so it has to be included. So to whatever extent my calculations last week were imperfect, this needs to be addressed as well because it's an additional cost. I calculated it for one couple. It was an an additional $8,000 a year, Medicare part B and D. That's what Irma does. So if you make too much money, money, and then if you do Roth IRAs, then maybe you're not making the money, but you're reporting it as income and you get stuck with it. So it's a means test for Medicare. Promises a free benefit for all has turned into a mess. So you got to pay for it because obviously Medicare is broken. Everything's broken. Everything's bankrupt. We have to look and people talk about saving the country and doing all these things. Well, you know what? 
to really save the country, we're all going to have to pony up a little bit. And where's it going to come from? So it's like all the other rules that have changed over time. It's happened so many times before that you'd be crazy not to expect it again. I love me a good rabbit hole. It's entertaining. When I was in uh, grade school, I'd go into the library and I would look at, I would check out all the books on UFOs and Bigfoot and all that stuff. Bermuda Triangle, I thought fascinating. I love mysteries and all that stuff. So for entertainment purposes, I dug into a few rabbit holes over time and I'll be damned if I didn't uncover some things that may be a little unsettling in some cases. And this is one of them because I've been in this business for 21 years and I started from an antagonist perspective and the benefit flows to you if we're trying to find true value in retirement. So Irma was the one thing that everybody noticed or several people noticed about last week that wasn't included and they're correct. Then we got to talk about social security. So it's set to be reduced in 2033. If nothing is done to fix the system, we all know they're not going to do anything about it. It's a political football. It's a class. It's class warfare is what it's going to come down to. Well, so-and-so has all this money. I want you guys to know I'm on your side. I want you to make as much money as you possibly can. Spend as much money as you want to. Never worry about retirement. And everybody's in a different situation. Any of the solutions to the social security mess are going to be unpopular. I have some ideas. If they means test Medicare, why wouldn't they also do it for social security? In the same sense that not very many people are going to feel sorry for someone getting stuck into Irma because they're making too much money in retirement. Nobody's going to feel bad for someone that's got, I don't know, several million bucks, more than enough money to live on, who gets their social security payments adjusted or taken away. I don't know if that's the case. This is pure speculation. But we see a pattern within these rules and within these systems that's happened over time. It's not going to be the same going forward. Some point it's got, something's got to give. So social security in regards to that was supposed to be tax-free. But that changed in 1984. The frog in boiling water, everybody now is used to the extra heat. You don't throw the frog into boiling water. You put it in the cold water on a stove, and it doesn't notice as it's cooked to death. That's what's going to happen here. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. I don't want to be super negative. I don't want people to worry about it, but you have to be realistic. Social Security was passed by FDR in 1935. Life expectancy in the U.S. was right around 60 years. Technical name of the bill is Old Age Survivors and Disability Insurance. Back in the 1930s, anyone over 60 years old was considered to be of extremely old age. Now, if payments had been adjusted for life expectancy, as they probably should have, to the nature of the true bill when it was first passed, it shouldn't be available until you're 75 or 80 years old. Now it's a foundation of retirement for almost everybody I talk to. Well, there's Social Security. We get this. We get that. In the early years, it only there were so many people contributing to it, and there were only a very few people collecting it who were fortunate enough to live past the ripe old age of 60. Now people expect to live on it for 20, 25, 30 years. A long time. Collect when you're 62. Hey, my family's got to talk to a guy today. Everybody in my family lives to 100, and he's only 63 years old. He's going to take Social Security at 70. Okay, fine, but he's still going to collect for 30 years. If he turns out to be like the rest of people in his family, he's in very good health. So it's not doing what it was initially proposed to do. It's providing more benefit. Every more, everybody's on the dole. So if you look at it, the reason why that the mainstream financial media is pushing you to delay payments. And I've done math uh, forwards and backwards. It's almost never the best thing. I don't try to change what everybody's saying or what everybody plans to do. The reason they tell everybody to delay is because they know they're not going to have to pay as much out. One way of changing the system without changing the rules is to say, hey, let's convince everybody to delay. So I'm going to offer my conspiracy theories about this, but I'm also going to give you the proof and use the process of deduction to see if you agree with me or disagree. And it's fine if you disagree, but I'm just sharing my ideas. I have the microphone so you will listen to every word I say. Think about this, the break even for social security payments, whether you take it 62, 67, 70, is typically right around age 80. Well, what's life expectancy? 78, 79, somewhere in that ballpark. 
So half of people are not even going to get to that point where they break even. And then half of people, and then once you get past where half of the people are supposed to die, then the other half drops off a lot more rapidly than it did leading up to that point. Okay. Where's life expectancy? So if the break even is 81 years old and your life expectancy is 79, obviously it's not good to delay social security. That makes so much sense to me. That's without doing any of the calculations, lots of opportunity costs, draining a portfolio just to delay social security only. So the cut up by 20%, 25% in 2033, they're going to do it. Something's going to happen. Something's got to give. I don't count on it, but I'm a lot younger than most of you guys. So I, in th- in that, in that respect, I'm only talking about averages. Everybody's going to be different. You do what you think is best, but I'm going to show you the numbers. If you think you're, you're going to live to 100, then obviously delaying Social Security is probably a good idea. I told everybody when I looked at that Social Security software that it assumed that everybody lived to age 100. If you calculate it to age 100, but a small fraction of the population is going to ma- even make it there. For most people, Think about the money that's going on out of pocket today. So there's my thoughts on Social Security. You got, you're, everybody's going to have to buck up and think things are going to have to change. It's broke. There's no money there. And there's far fewer people paying into the system. You guys know the younger generations don't want to go to work, right? That's why they're having all the protests on college campuses, a bunch of spoiled brats at Ivy League colleges, getting a liberal arts degree, no job prospects, all that stuff. That, that's who you rely on. Like it or not. So Roth IRAs, that's the next hot topic that I don't necessarily trust. I'm going to give you my reasons for doing it. I'm not saying don't be in a Roth IRA, but consider all this. It seems like a good deal, like everything in the past. Oh, you got to pay for Medicare if you make too much money. Oh, Social Security is taxable, right? IRAs didn't even come into play until the early 70s. That was ERISA, where you had 401ks, IRAs, all that stuff. It's relatively new stuff. And I think it's funny, and I'm going to tell everybody, this is publicly now, I don't do a raw, an IRA. And people say, why don't you do an IRA? Because I have to help you guys figure out all the BS that goes along with it and all the rules you got to follow just to deal with it in retirement. I decided a long time ago, I would never do it. And maybe one day I'll do a podcast. Hey, here's my financial plan. I'll share it with you guys. It doesn't matter to me, but I do non-qualified investments real estate, life insurance, precious metals, bank accounts, right? And I'm investing in my business as well. So I talked about Roth conversions last week. So everybody think I'm crazy. My ex-wife thought I was crazy. When did you become such a conspiracy? Well, I've been contrary in my entire career, my entire life. This goes way back to my athletic career in college. And it worked out for me. So I decided to stay on that track. And if you guys think I'm nuts, go ahead. That's fine. I don't think it's right to go full force into a Roth conversion. I think it costs too much. Best case, it's a wash in most situations. Doesn't mean it's not possible. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do small amounts here and there. But what I looked at last week, and I don't think like you had a couple that was going to do massive conversions and it was six of one, half a dozen of the other. So I would definitely not recommend it. Now, like, eliminating the tax benefits for Roth IRAs, it would be a mess. You think about the couple last week that paid $600,000 in taxes to get a $2 million IRA converted. That'd be a screw job for them for sure. If then it was taxable. So is there a means test? Is there something? Is there an excluded amount that's taxable? Whatever. The feds are going to get the grimy paws into something because they need money, right? Got to pay for crab legs and cocktail hour in the capital. So the actual tax code basically says it's long. It's I got it up here on the sheet. I'm not going to pull it up, but it it says you don't get a deduction for contributions and any distributions are not includable in gross income for taxes. It, it doesn't say it's tax free, but you interpret it as that. So it's a small change in the wording that can potentially create the difference. And when you look at that, you have to wonder, is there a door open for Roth IRAs to be taxable? I don't know. Just, I'm supposing a few things. So my best evidence for this is last year, I processed my first death claim on an annuity. Uh, Poor guy, really nice guy. He passed away within his first year, right? So the death benefit on the annuity was 
it was an income contract. He was going to defer for a while, but the death benefit was all the premium plus a little bit of interest fully payable to his widow. So I helped him with the paperwork, submitted a form along with the death certificate, the whole thing. She got the money within maybe a week. Okay. With, along with the check that she got, she needed the money. It wasn't a huge amount, but she could use the money. So she took the check out and it was a Roth IRA. And she called me panicking. Oh my goodness, it's a Roth, but they sent me a 1099. I thought this was supposed to be tax-free. Now I can't see the form or the paperwork they sent, so I don't know. Well, let me call the company. So I call the company and ask them about it. And the rep at the insurance company said, well, if you look at the document, which I couldn't see, you look at the document, it says 0% taxable, but we're required to send a 1099 anyway. 1099 is what you get for interest income, bank, dividends, or an IRA distribution, get a 1099. So right now I would say that the in, the taxable rate is currently zero, but it's already in the works to be included because they're tracking distributions of Roth. If like truly tax free is like, give me something you don't track. Well, they're tracking that. And who knows how small a change does it take an act of Congress? Does it take legislation or do they just go in there and change the rules? They change a the sentence. I don't know. That's why I say don't sell out to do a Roth conversion because you never know. And I wouldn't trust them. So this is not meant to scare anyone. I like a good conspiracy theory. Share yours with me. Don't be scared. It's going to be fine. We continue to do efficient plans for everyone and we're working on the best solution for anybody who calls in but if you're making big moves in retirement remember cooler heads prevail so do not freak out i had a couple people last year we got to do two hundred thousand dollar roth conversion by the end of the year oh no tax rates are going up like it's a scare tactic relax and don't worry about it run the numbers because most people in a roth conversion scenario they're better off just taking RMD, supplementing income, and reinvesting the money. May not be as good for your beneficiaries, so that's something you think about. Roth conversions were first allowed in 2006, and IRMA for Medicare came out in 2007. Do you think that's a coincidence? Or did they see large amounts of money being converted, and all of a sudden, wait a second, we can get our hands on that. They didn't put, out, put that up for a vote, right? They just, stroke of a pen. And they started charging people for Medicare's Part B and D. 2019, you got elimination of stretch IRAs. Everybody was excited. Oh, the RMD is extended. Now it's 73. Now it's 75 for anybody that's about, you know, born after July 1st, 1960. Wow, what a great thing. Well, you know what? You can't do a stretch IRA anymore. When they give you one thing, they take another thing away. So be careful and don't look at everything as just a benefit. You got to be strategic about it and figure out how best to deal with it. So stretch IRAs, taxable Social Security, IRMA rolled out before. I would expect nothing less going forward to support a defunct system. Promises made have always been promises broken. You tell me who I can trust. You tell me who didn't lie. I trust myself. I trust you. We can rely on each other, but don't rely on what's going on in Washington, D.C. That is, that's crazy. So this has been episode 141, Financial Conspiracy Theories. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for letting me blow smoke on this. I enjoy it. Tell me about your favorite ones. You want to make an appointment and talk about it? Top right corner of any page on annuitystraighttalk.com. Give me the thumbs up on YouTube or like it. Comment on the newsletter. Share your thoughts and it will allow me to sharpen my blades and provide better information going forward. So you guys have a wonderful day. I will see you next week for episode 142. Okay, bye.